Hi everybody. I just thought I would get on here today and maybe do some fun techniques. I haven't got on and worked on techniques in a while. Um, if you've never been on my page, my name is Valerie from Stampin' with Valerie. That is the um, page you're on on Facebook right now. So I'm going to pull my video up here just so I can make sure you all are seeing what I'm trying to show you. And what I want to play with today is this new um, medley. It is in the January mini catalog. I say new. It's been out since January. But it has this botanical print stamp set. Comes with this fantastic twill ribbon, which is um, an old olive. Let me just cut that open because this is my first time looking at all of this so I'm pretty excited to be playing with this little set. We're gonna play with make some backgrounds and do just some different techniques and have fun. I'm gonna go on your suggestions so you can help me design whatever we're making today. So isn't that pretty that twill ribbon it's really thin so it's pretty easy to make bows with I think it'll be perfect. These fantastic little bees, these little metal bees I think are great. We'll use those as some accents on whatever we make today. We have the botanical print dies come with this. And let's see what the dies cut out. I'm assuming these fruits for sure. And then maybe some other little things. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so we got this little awesome medallion thing. This, these are two separate triangles and then you, they cut out the fruits and some little leaves. So those are perfect with this set. Let's see what we have for the paper and then we'll get started doing some techniques. All right, so in the paper pack, you get all these little labels, which these are great because it makes it easy to just stamp a sentiment on it and add that to the front of your card. You get all these little fruit die cuts. Look at those, aren't those gorgeous? I'm gonna look at the back of this and see what the all the colors that are in here. You get, looks like five of these. Maybe there's another one hidden in there somewhere, but I count five right now of these little masks, which these are gonna be fantastic. We're gonna use these to make some patterns with as well. And then you have all of this gorgeous paper and it is double-sided, so I'll flip it over after we see all the different prints. I believe there are 48 sheets of this. And then you have just the black and white on the back, so it's just gorgeous. So I guess I thought it had listed the colors on here. So I'm gonna have to open up the catalog and see what all the colors that are definitely coordinating with this because that's what we're gonna be using for our backgrounds that we're making today. So let me just open up this January mini catalog, find the medley. Sure Val, find the medley. It's here somewhere, right? What's the name of this botanical? We will find the botanical print stamp set and go from there, I think. Does anyone see it? Am I missing it? I'm totally, I feel like I'm totally missing it right now. All right, we're just gonna go through the catalog and look. Seriously, right there, page 61. Page 61, so the colors, basic black, copper, crushed curry, old olive, pretty peacock, terracotta tile, and whisper white. So, there we go, and it says, let me see how many prints it says, or how many sheets of paper. Yes, eight each of six double-sided designs. So 48 sheets total of that six by six paper, which is fantastic. Hi, Linda, how are you? All right, I'm just gonna set that behind me. We'll put these together real quick. If you haven't put your stamps together yet, I wanna show you real quick with the red rubber. What I do is I just peel this backing off after I get all of my stamps out of it. And you can see this one has a lot of little pieces of paper that kind of stuck to the side. And I just stick this inside my case and just leave it. Then when I put my stamps away, they all fit directly right back in there. So I just peel all the backings off and I'm not gonna put all these on right now. I'll just put one and then as we use the stamp, we'll get it ready and go with it. Just take all your backings off. Just put them, I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna stick these in here for now because I'm not gonna do them all while we're waiting. If we need one, we'll add it later with the um, cling sticker because the cling stickers are really sticky so there's kind of a trick to putting them together 
So let's do this one with the peaches. Are those peaches? No, I don't know, whatever fruit they are, berries of some sort. I don't know why peaches are in my brain. But once you peel half of it, line your stamp up and stick it down. Have you tried this, Linda? Have you done this? Someone's trying to call me. Hopefully it didn't pause the video. All right, so there we go. Now you've got your cling on the back and it's very sticky. So you just have to be aware when you do it that way, um, it makes it easier to keep everything from sticking together. All right, so let's play around. Let's do some backgrounds. Something that I haven't done in a long time is played with my embossing paste. So I thought I would get the embossing paste out and we could play with that. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put down just an extra piece of copy paper underneath it just to keep this area from getting too sticky. And now I have two different sets of masks. I have the basic pattern decorative masks. I believe these were in the holiday catalog, but I think you can still get them online. They're not in the regular catalog. But we have all these fantastic patterns with the trees and the brocade and the polka dot, and then this leafy one, which I really love, which maybe I think we'll use that one because it kind of goes with what we're doing over here. So I'm gonna take a piece of, let's find a color that we like that goes with this maybe pretty peacock. Let's do a pretty peacock background. So we'll get some pretty peacock out. If anyone's on and you have any suggestions, shoot them out because I'm gonna try to go with what everyone's suggestion, suggesting. I'm gonna look at the comments and do some different things. I have a piece of pretty peacock that already looks like it is the correct measurement. So let me just check four by five and a quarter. Yes, yay. All right, so I'm gonna lay that down and I'm gonna put my mask over the top of it. Now you can, if you want to, take a little piece of washi tape, stick it down and hold it in place. And I'm gonna actually do that just to make sure I don't move too far off here. If I can find the end of this washi tape. And I'm just gonna hold a couple of the corners down just to keep it in place so I don't move it because I'll probably move it as I'm going over it. Now, I don't like to put washi tape on the piece of cardstock that's underneath because this pretty much holds it in place. Now we have shimmery white embossing paste and you can use it with just that white color and you can use the basic white as well. This one's shimmery, I just wanted to add a little bit of shimmer, tech, shimmer to this. And then I have my little palette knives. And I always, whenever I'm using embossing paste, I keep baby wipes right next to me because those I use to wipe the palette knives off with. You can see this one didn't get wiped off right away and it's still got some crusty stuff on it. But let's just start with a little bit of white and I'm gonna work on this corner with just white. But because I want to try some different techniques, we're gonna leave that like that. So it's just like that corner. And then I'm gonna get out my silicone mat. I'm going to push this off to the side just a little bit because I want to color some of this. I've never colored any of this. Have you colored this? Have you tried it? I haven't. So I thought, you know what, why not? Let's give it a shot. And let's use one of the colors that are in this medley. So we've got pretty peacock crushed curry. Let's maybe do some crushed curry. I think that would be pretty on top of the pretty peacock. So let me find my crushed curry ink refill because that's how we're gonna color that embossing paste. We're just gonna take a little bit of it and we don't need a lot. I think that'll probably be enough for everything that we wanna finish here. I'm just gonna close this up and I'm just gonna put a dot of the crushed curry ink on there. And then I'm just gonna mix it up with this palette knife. The wonderful thing about this silicone mat is everything will wash off it when we're done. But look at that. Now we have crushed curry, shimmery embossing paste. I'm going to set this over here. I'm going to actually, I should probably wipe it with a wipe before I move it aside in case we want to color some more in a minute. That way we won't have them all mixed together. 
just wipe it off with your wipe. And you can just use hot soapy water on it too. And that's probably what I'll do when I'm all done. I'll use the hot soapy water. So we'll bring this back over and now we're gonna do that crushed curry on here. And we'll just fill it in until we get as much of it filled as we can with what we had. If we don't fill the entire rest, that's okay. We can just kind of get it all, scrape all of it off that you can get it on there because this is just our background. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And it doesn't have, there we go. We'll add a little bit. Let's take a little bit of white out of here. I'm not gonna scoop it with this because I don't wanna get any of that crushed curry in here. But I'm just gonna put a couple of splotches of white on there and just move them throughout. So we've got a little bit of crushed curry and a little bit of the plain white on there, kind of mix it together. Perfect. So let's get that pulled off and see what it looks like. And then we'll have to let it dry and we'll use it as a background for a card while we're working on this. While you're on here, make sure you give me some suggestions. What do you want me to try? Is there anything you want me to make with this? And so there's how that turned out. Isn't that gorgeous? That is so pretty with that colored like that. And then even just adding that little bit of white over here to go over some of the spots and make them a little bit lighter is perfect. So now I'm just gonna take a another wipe and I'm just gonna wipe this off as much as I can for now because obviously I'm not putting it in soapy water right this minute, but just get as much of that off of it as you can. And it does come pretty clean with the wipe. And just remember, you're using these over and over, so they're never gonna be 100% clean again once you've used them. But just get them as clean as you can. And then you can just set that off to the side to dry as well until we're ready to use it. Now, if I wasn't gonna be using this again or was done with my project, I would definitely put it in soapy water right now and clean it. But since I got this all wet with that wipe, I'm just gonna fold it in half and we can still use it for something else. So there's one background that's using the embossing paste and coloring the embossing paste with some of that gorgeous crushed curry ink. All right, any other ideas? Something that you wanna try? Shout it out, so to speak in the comments so I know what everyone wants to try. And while we're waiting for that, I wanna take, I was gonna show you these gorgeous little pieces that came in the set. You can use them either way with the front or the back. But what I wanna use them for is I wanna make a sponged background. You can use these as masks as well. And then after you've sponged on them, that color is gonna be on your piece of paper. So let's get, um, let's go with a whisper white background just because it will fit nice and perfect on there. I'm gonna take a small piece just on the very corner because I really don't want this to be stuck down a lot. I only want it to be stuck down just a little bit, just enough to hold it in place. And then we can do maybe some terracotta tile on this because that is another coordinating color. And we'll just do two corners. I'm literally just barely touching the edge of that. Okay, so now that that's down, we'll get some sponges out. Now, I like to use the regular round sponges. You can buy these round sponges, I'm gonna show you. You can buy our round stampin' sponges. Then you can take those sponges these are not the perfect scissors to use for this, but I'm gonna use these scissors because that's what's right here in front of me, and cut them. Once you've got them cut into little wedges, and I usually get about eight wedges out of one sponge, so you get a lot of use out of these sponges. Then take a punch, like a circle punch, or it doesn't even matter, a square punch, whatever you have, a shape that you have that you wanna use. This was an old tab punch. And I put them on there and then I staple them with my little mini stapler. You can use a regular stapler, you can, you know, whatever you wanna use. And then you can sponge without getting the ink all over your fingers because you can hold on to that little tab. 
Another helpful hint. Perfect for today since we're doing techniques and helpful hints on this video. Now, you can also use the little sponge daubers, which I have those labeled as well. And what I would do with this is I would label it with whatever color we're gonna use. So let me just see if I have crushed curry in here already and I don't see it, but I also have my other sponges here. I may have crushed curry in here. So let me look real quick. I do, I have crushed curry. We can use that one. Um, maybe some terracotta tile. Let me see if I have terracotta tile. I don't, but I've got extra ones here that we can, that already have tabs on them. We can use these. So we'll get out the terracotta tile. Eight. And we're gonna do some sponging on that. Let's just label one of these terracotta tile. So that way I know it's already labeled before I put it away. And then I can just reuse them over and over. All right, so we have terracotta tile. Let's get some crushed curry out. Pretty peacock was the other color. So let's see, I may have a pretty peacock already. I feel like I've used that, but you just never know. I've used a lot of colors and I don't remember all of the colors I've used. I don't see it, so we'll just label one for pretty peacock as well. And then we'll be ready to go. Whoops, let's use this one, it's a little bit thicker. That first one I cut was a little skinny. All right, so we got pretty peacock, terracotta tile, and crushed curry. Let's start with terracotta tile. And so you just ink up your sponge, that's it. And you just get a little bit of it off. And then now I'm just gonna do just basic sponging like this. Now, you can rub it over this way to make a pattern like that, but I just kind of want it like this daubed look. So that's what we're gonna do with this. We're just gonna daub it on there. We will go ahead and use some Pretty Peacock. Get that daubered on there. And like I said, what I love about this is that we're gonna have this background, but we're also gonna have this piece we can use again as another background and some crushed curry. I need to move this over just a little bit because I keep almost sticking my fingers in it. It's almost dry. That's how fast that dries. It's super fast. So you don't have to worry about it not being drying fast. It will dry pretty quickly. Oopsie. That's life. That's my mask telling me you've gone far enough. It's coming apart already. All right, so let's see what we got. So we have that super cute background. Look at that and how easy that was to do. You can do this multiple times. You can use this over and over and over. And it's a little bit thicker. You know, it's cardstock thickness, so it's not gonna last forever. But because you've got two different patterns in here, you could save two of these and use them just as masks. And you could actually use them with the embossing paste as well. But once you use them with the embossing paste, that would be the last time you would use them because they get kind of gunky after that because they are paper and you can't just wash them off like you can with the other mats. All right, so there's two more backgrounds. So that's three backgrounds we've created. Does anyone have any suggestions for a technique or a background to use with this? Or for making a background, something that they've seen that they haven't tried yet, something just that they would like me to do. I'm gonna set these over to the side and I wanna grab some more. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna grab a full sheet of Whisper White cardstock and we're gonna go from there with a full sheet and then we can cut it down when we're done. So we'll grab a full sheet of Whisper White. And because I want to use the spritzer, let me get my little sponges out of the way here. I want to use the spritzer. Has anyone used their spritzer with alcohol and an ink color? I have not used it in a long time like this. But again, because we are going with this set, I kind of want to do a color that goes with this. 
And I think I'm gonna go with the terracotta tile. And let me see if I have that in my, I believe I have that color in all my little cases. I love to use these little um, half wide cases to hold my inks. They work perfect. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna take the lid off. I'm gonna put a piece of paper towel underneath it just because I'm messy and I might spill a little bit. So maybe I should move my whisper white paper out of the way. We're gonna take some rubbing alcohol. Now I just found this in my bathroom. It is like expired in 2013. So I don't even know how, if the strength is still 70%, but I'm gonna fill my spritzer with this. Still smells like alcohol, so I'm saying it's still working. And then we'll put a drop or two of this terracotta tile in here. And the reason I'm using alcohol is just because it will dry faster. You can use water if you want, that's fine too. Obviously the more ink you put in it, the darker it's gonna be when you spritz it. But I just put two drops in this and then we'll get it shook up and then we'll spray after we get it all mixed in. And this is gonna be kind of light. You can see it's not super dark, but it will give us some pattern on this Whisper White cardstock. And I think because I have some extra paper towel in here, I'm just gonna lay some paper towel underneath it to kind of absorb a little bit of that as we spray. I know people are probably freaking out. Oh my gosh, she has paper towel. I use these paper towels over and over in here. This is not like I'm just gonna throw them away. Once this dries, I will be reusing them. I have paper towels over here that have ink all over them. Okay, so now that I've got it mixed, let's get it spritzing. I'm gonna spritz it over here in the garbage can first. Make sure it's spritzing. And then you just spritz it onto your paper. Now, you can keep spritzing and get the entire page, this beautiful light terracotta tile color, which I actually kind of like how that looks. So I'm gonna let that dry like that. I'm not gonna spritz the back of it, but I'm gonna let that dry like that. I think that's really pretty in that color. What do you think? I think it turned out cute. But then I'm gonna take just a small piece and I'm gonna add some more ink to this because look how much I used out of that just to spritz that entire eight and a half by 11 sheet. We're gonna make this darker and we're gonna add just some nice little dots, spritz dots, I think to this other whisper white. I put three more drops of ink in here. So we're gonna have to get that to mix up and then we can go from there. And you can see already how much darker that is, obviously. With that in there. I'm gonna set this paper off to the side. Actually, I'm gonna set it on my table behind me so it can dry flat, or as flat as it will get, anyway. Um, sorry, I don't have a microphone, so I know when I walk away, it gets a little light sounding. All right, so now I'm just gonna Do just a couple of little, little spritzes. Now, it didn't get as dark as I thought it would, even with that being darker. So let's add a little bit more to it. Let's see what we get, because like I said, I haven't played with this technique a lot. So I don't know, maybe you gotta put a lot of ink in here. Let's do, I think I did six or seven more drops in there. Let's see if it'll get much darker because I do want it to be darker than what we just did over there. And since there is a lot less alcohol in here, that obviously the ratio is way different. All right, we've got it. Let's do a little spritz and see what we get. There we go, that's a little better. A little bit darker. Just a fun background. Let's do it on this side and see. 
kind of flattens it out once you go back over on the back side of it. And I actually kind of like the way this side turned out better as I was spraying and I went left to right. And so I got a little bit of that splattery look over here. And maybe if I hold it farther away, let's try that. Let's see what we get if I hold it farther away. So I'm gonna hold it up here. You get a little bit more of that splatter, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna do another one from farther away because I love that splattery look. I don't like when it's just all this. I kind of wanted it to be like this. So let's see if we can do it. You can't see my hand, it's out of camera, but. Oh, that's pretty. So I kind of sprayed off to the side here and then the splatter went onto the paper. So make sure you have something behind you, paper towel, anything like that, when you're doing a technique like this. All right, let's move these off to dry. They won't take too long because they're not super wet like the first piece of paper. And then we can maybe start putting something together. All right, let's see. Does anyone have any suggestions? Um, I know I've asked that already, but I don't know who's joined since um, I started. I'm gonna take one of my baby wipes here and just go around my table a little bit because I can see a little bit of that terracotta tile ink around there, just where it's splattered on the outside edge. Now, if you have something like a um, box, that's perfect for spraying in. Use a box because that will keep that splatter from going everywhere, but it's so much fun just to play around with that stuff. All right, so let's talk about die cuts. When you get your die cuts, these are from that Botanical Prince medley. And what I love about these fruits is that they have, they're already, you know, obviously die cut. They have a little white edge on them. If you want to, make them look a little bit antique -y. You can do the same thing like distressing um, that a lot of people do. And you can use whatever color ink that you want. I'm thinking with this, because they are kind of dark, I think an early espresso would be pretty. So let's get some early espresso ink and just kind of go around the edges of it and kind of, I say antique it, but age that paper a little bit, I guess is what you would call it. And let's see how it turns out with early espresso. As you can see, I use early espresso a lot with sponging. I love this color. Just get a little bit off on there because you don't want it completely. And I like to kind of go as close to that image as possible. So kind of get all around that little background if you can. Now it's kind of hard when you have something in like this so you just lay it down and kind of just sponge around it. And now obviously if you didn't want it to look aged or antiqued or weathered or whatever you want to call it, whatever you call this technique, don't do this. Just leave it plain white and it's fine. And now you can also go over the front of it just a little bit and obviously the lighter the ink, the lighter this will be. So if you wanted it lighter, you could use Sahara sand or something like that. But that gives it just a little bit of a distressed look, a little bit of an aged look, not quite so brand new. So you could always take things that you have and make them look like they were meant to be, that antique aged look, just by using some sponging and some ink. Let's try maybe, we'll do one of each of these images actually. Let's do one of each since we can. Why not? We have two sheets, so let's do them. There's extra cherries, so we won't do the extra cherries. But we'll just go ahead and we've got the oranges done already. Cherries we'll do right now. I think the cherries will be really pretty with this little aging technique. Has anyone done this in a different way, not using a sponge like spritzing or just um, 
I know some people sometimes use just the ink pad itself and kind of go around the edges and you can do that with some things, but when they aren't um, straight edges, it's not always easy to do. Right. I like these, these are plums I'm assuming. Plums, am I correct? Plums everyone, I think they're plums. do a little bit on the center of that one. I love the way that looks. And then get a little bit on the center of that one too. And then we'll do the lemons and we'll be done with this technique. This is just something, just a reminder because sometimes I forget, so I'm sure you all do too, how many different techniques there are that we can add to our paper crafting projects. Because these, the way these are made like this, I think these would be adorable on a scrapbook page, like a vintage scrapbook page now that they've got that little bit of that aged look to them. I think they would be perfect for something like that. So there you go, aged, not aged. What do you think? Which one is your favorite? Which one do you like? Have you used that technique? Is this something new that you're going to try? Give it a shot, let me know. Show your stuff in the comments. All right, so that was early espresso ink. Since we use terracotta tile ink in my spritzer, let me see if I have a second spritzer here. I don't remember if I've already used it for something or if it's over here or not, but I don't see it here. So I don't have another spritzer here. So we aren't gonna do any more spritzing unless I take a break and rinse that one out. But let's do, now that we have these already kind of aged, Let's just set these aside. I'm gonna bring back those other backgrounds that we make and I'm gonna show you like this is already hard where we did the embossing paste and we colored it with the crushed curry ink. Then we took one of these fantastic little um, die cuts that we have and we used it as a mask to make two more backgrounds. And let's take and make some cards or something with all these fantastic little things we've played with. All right, so now that we have some backgrounds. I would like to choose a paper maybe to go with this background. And what do you think we should go with? Should we go with something with the crushed curry? Or should we go with something with the poppy or pretty peacock? Sorry, I almost said poppy parade, pretty peacock. I think I wanna go with something with this crushed curry. So let's add that, and we have this lemon as well, the little le have lemons, which I think are gorgeous. And let's get our little mini paper trimmer because we can use that. Since we want this for a background, we, I will probably go with, let me see if I have any Whisper White cardstock ready. I'm feeling like the Whisper White cardstock would be good as the background. And then I kind of like this one to work with rather than the little lemon. No one's given me any suggestions. So you got to go with what I'm saying now because no one's helping me out here. <laughs> I'm going to cut it four inches wide. So we have our four. Actually, yeah, let's do four. And then because I don't want it to cover this entire piece. I just kind of want a strip. So maybe let's do just these here. So like one and three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches. Let's do one and a half inches. And then we've got that coming across the front of the card. And then we can even add in some black and white if we want to from the other side, or we can also add in a small strip of this. So maybe let's do that. Let's add in a one inch strip of this with the lemon, sliced lemons. And we'll just cut that one inch strip first, and then we'll do it at four inches. And then the two of these can kind of go together We'll put it in that way. 
maybe with the lemons coming out the top. What do you think? Lemons on the top, lemons on the bottom. I don't know. And even though we just aged these, I don't want to put an aged one on here. I want one that is just the Wisp of White because that is kind of what we're going with for the back of the card and everything here anyway. So let's keep it just Whisper White. And I want to incorporate a label on here. Definitely a label. Possibly, I know this is a lot of background, but I might cut one of these, a piece off from one of these to put in there too. But let's get our sentiment. Let's see what sentiment would be like. I'm always here for you. Thank you kindly or friend. I kind of like the, um, I'm always here for you. So let's get that one out and get it on a label. And again, I'll show you how to do these fantastic labels because these are super sticky with these cling labels. Get that on there. I'm hoping Facebook is doing this live because it's saying I've only been live for eight minutes, but I know it's been a lot longer than eight minutes. And it is, um, I'm not seeing any comments in the last minute or so. And I just want to make sure if, if you're on here, let me know somehow because it's, and that's okay if you're not. I understand everybody has lives, but just in case Facebook is just being finicky today. Who knows? All right, so let's use the I'm always here for you. And I think we'll have to put that in this larger label. And we're going to go ahead and use Pretty Peacock because we want it to blend with what we've already done here. So let's get our stamp inked up. Perfect. Love it. It's going to be great. Now I've got to find my chamois over here amongst all my other things. If you could see my desk right now, you'd be like, I don't even know how this woman's doing this. She's got a lot of stuff going on. Because I do. When I start these projects, I always end up with a lot of things on my desk. And that's okay. It's kind of how I work. It doesn't bother me a bit. All right, let's get the little trimmer out. Let's cut some of this off because I don't want to use the whole sheet. But I want some of it. Maybe like three rows. So I'm counting three rows and then I'm just gonna trim it off. Perfect. And now I don't want this side, I want the Whisper White side. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take some Tombow glue and first I'm gonna go just across this and I wanna get these two pieces together and just make them, make it look even. And then this is a little smaller and that's okay. That's kind of, actually I might even trim it just a little bit more. And I'm just gonna use my scissors to get it right at the edge because I kind of went, cut a little bit more than I wanted with the trimmer. So I'm just gonna trim it off with this and I'm gonna save this other piece for another card because it will still be perfect to use for another card with just that little cute strip but I kind of wanted this to kind of come out this way now, do I want it on both ends what do you think both ends like this not like this we're gonna use some of that old olive ribbon that comes with this because I want to tie that around because I think it's perfect for tying around and I want to just tie it around these two pieces here and I'm gonna cut enough that I can make a bow with it. Because I think a bow would be perfect on this card. I know everyone has been hunkering down as much as possible, and I think that's fantastic. But sometimes we get a little bit bored, so I figured let's do some crafting today. I know if you are like me, you're wanting something to do anyway. Don't get me wrong, I could totally binge watch something on Netflix right now. And I probably will later. 
but right now I just want to do some crafting. I just want to share this medley with everyone and hopefully give you some ideas. I think I should have cut my piece of twill a little bit longer. Let me cut a longer piece and we'll save that for another one. Just not quite getting a bow out of that. All right, we'll save that piece for the next project. And I wanna bring it over to this left side is where I want my bow. And once I start tying it, I try to bring it up. So it's kind of up here. And I don't wanna stick it down yet, but I will stick it down in a minute with a glue dot to hold it in place. But just not yet, it's not ready for that yet because I just wanna get my the bow part tied. See, how am I doing this? And not. <laughs> I hope you all are having as much fun uh, laughing at me as I am laughing at myself here with this tying this silly bow. Sometimes it's the little things in life that kick your butt. And I will always say it tying a bow while doing a video live is one of those things. And people are like, oh, it's just a bow bow. Come on. But until you've done it in front of people and you're trying to make it look cute, you just don't realize what a difficult task that can be. All right. So there we go. So there's our bow. I'm not going to trim it yet. I'll trim it in just a minute. We'll just kind of leave it like that for now. We're just going to put a couple layers on here and see what we get. See what it turns out like. Although I will put my glue dot on the back here. So what I do with the glue dot, I'm gonna close this ink as I'm making a mess over here. Let me find my glue dots. They should be right here in front of me and there they are, awesome. Okay, so use your take your pick tool, the end of your scissors or whatever you have. Scoop up one of those little glue dots off your roll. Stick it right underneath that knot to hold that down and that will hold it in place. So when you're trying to place it on your card, it's not going all over the place. Let's just trim these off now. So they're about even, pretty close to even anyway. And I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of this because I want this part raised up. You know me, dimensionals are like one of the products I use the most with my card making, I hope you do too, because it really adds something fun to your project. All right, so let's see what we've got. Pull that up a little bit. And I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna add an extra one here just to hold that in place. I should have stuck one on there to begin with but to kind of hold that ribbon in place on the back. Now I could have put a glue dot on the back of it as well. That would have been fine. But since I had the dimensionals right here, I went with the dimensionals. I'm gonna take all these backings off. Then we're gonna adhere our um, background that we created at the beginning of the video. And I'm just gonna use if I get that sticky off. I'm gonna use some snail adhesive on the back of this, which will work just fine for holding this down onto the Whisper White card base. All right, fold our card in half. I'm just gonna use, kind of pinch it right now until I get my, um, there we go. There we go. Bone folder. Go right down there. Get that. Perfect. All right. Now I want this coming out from the front and the back of this piece, but I want it to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to put of it right here and I'm gonna need a glue dot to hold it down because I don't have a dimensional there so I'm just gonna actually take two glue dots one on each corner and hold it down right here so it's coming out from the top and then we're gonna have some coming out from the bottom so we'll put glue dots on that corner as well on the other two corners for the bottom piece here well that 
that glue dots deciding it's not wanting to come so let's just scoop it right off there get it out of our way now it doesn't have to come out quite as far or it can come out farther it doesn't matter but the beautiful thing about doing that and cutting it in half like that is it makes your piece a little bit longer we have this much extra that we didn't have to use. I want that even on the top. So, now the only thing holding those on are those glue dots on the back. But look, that looks adorable like that, doesn't it? I think that's really cute. And now we have our sentiment. I'm always here for you. We have our little lemons that are gonna go on here. Now those can go kind of behind this, I think. I would like to grab a punch, so let me grab a leaf punch. I think the leaf punch is perfect for this. We can do some, let me see if we want any in Pretty Peacock or if we just wanna do, nope, I think we need to do Old Olive for sure. So I'm gonna grab Old Olive. some little scraps and we'll add some extra leaves to this now there are dies we could do some little die cuts as well but I just haven't brought the big shot over so let's just use this punch and add some extra little leaves back here let's see how we want them if we put our lemons here and we have our sentiment here what do you think about adding a couple of leaves down maybe one this way we can add an extra one over here we could even add um, a little bit of this extra piece coming out I know I just have to think through this as I'm making this card and decide what we want on here so if you have any suggestions, shoot them out there, shout them out. I'm just gonna add a couple of dimensionals here and we'll stick those lemons on first to get those on there. So we know where they're going. Right here on the right hand side of that card. We could even bring the sentiment up just a little bit. Maybe so it's right here. We'll add the sentiment on in the center of the card. We have the extra little leaves that we can have coming out, or we can just not put them in at all. It's just, sometimes I like to just, obviously you have to play with it and see what looks best and see if it's worth adding extra into it or if it's better just to leave it plain. I say, I say plain, but you know, without the extra is what I'm saying. Let's see, we can actually do some behind the bow. Mm. Let's see what vellum looks like. You know I love vellum. Let's try some vellum. Once we get the vellum, it, vellum for me just is like one of the magical ingredients to a card or something. So I actually do kind of like the way that vellum looks on this side. So let's add a couple of, or a glue dot on the back of this. I'm gonna add a glue dot on the back and on the front so it's really stuck. <laughs> and then we could just stick it in here with the take your pick tool is the easiest way to get it in because that little point will kind of slide right under and then you can add those leaves in I think it needs to go a little bit further we'll add it in a little bit further and this one will be done I think I don't think we need to add any extra to this one once we've got this on there I think that's plenty and you tell me what you think if you like the way it turned out there's card number one. All right, 
So let's play around with these other backgrounds that we made. Now I do have those other terracotta tile ones I'm gonna grab. Now once we spritzed this large paper and we got this beautiful super pastel background, I think is really pretty. But I also really love this splattered background, so I would kind of like to use maybe a little bit of each. I don't know. Let's see what we've got. We can cut some of them apart and use pieces of them. It doesn't have to be the entire piece. Um, but I definitely want to try something with the terracotta tile paper that comes in this medley as well. So let's see. We have the beautiful blossoms. Excuse me. We have the blossoms and the peaches there. So we have peach blossoms. And look at the back of this one. This is fantastic. I love that. I think we're going to use those for sure for this card. So let's do something fun with this. All right, do we want to go with the regular card size? Just let me know what you got, what you want, and we'll play around with it. I kind of like the idea of cutting a piece of this as a strip so we can get that mini trimmer back out. I love how it fits the six by six paper. So if you join my team, you can get one of these super cute mini trimmers. All right, let's go from this end because this is a full strip and I kind of want like three, three of these squares as a row. And I think right now we'll just leave it long and then we can decide how much we want to take off from it later. And now do we want to use this piece or would we like something with a little more in the background? I kind of like the way these two look right there together. Now this one on the other side has um, the fruit cut in half, the pomegranates, I guess they are. But I kind of like the way this looks like this. So let's keep this like this. Let's get a piece of, how about gray granite? Let's see how that looks. Gray granite maybe? Or smoky slate. Let's see smoky slate. Ah, smoky slate. I think smoky slate looks much better with it. So let's get some smoky slate. We'll get the regular big paper trimmer out because we're going to need that for this. And let's do our card four and a quarter by 11. And then we're going to use the scoring blade and we'll score it at five and a half. So we don't want to drop the cutting blade on it like I just did. Use your lighter colored scoring blade. And then this is already four and a quarter, just over, let's make this four wide. So we're gonna cut that at four. It was about four and one eighth. And we're gonna cut it at five and a quarter. Cut that at five and a quarter. And then this piece, let's make it the entire length of the card. So let's make it five and a half. So it's gonna go from top to bottom on the card, which I think is perfect. And then look, we have these little, some extra little squares left over. All right, so let's get our card stuck folded. Use that bone folder on it. We're gonna use that as our main background, but let's add in some of this somehow. I'm not sure how. Let's see what we get once we put this on here. We may end up not even using that background with this even though I love how light it is. I love how light this is as well. Without the splatter, it kind of looks really pretty with that. So with that said, maybe let's make We'll use the big trimmer again because we got the larger sheet of paper. And it actually still feels a little bit wet even though I used alcohol on it and not um, water. So it takes a little while for all of this to dry. So let's make a three quarter inch strip, I think. I think a three quarter inch strip will be big enough. 
because we can put our sentiment on this three quarter inch strip. We can do maybe the thank you kindly. So let's make it, let's go with this end. It's a little darker on this end. Let's go maybe with a two inch strip and see how that looks. Mm, let's go three. Let's cut it at three. And then I will grab the banner triple punch. Because that is one of my favorite things to do is cut that banner at the end. And we don't want it, a lot of it cut off. We just want the very tip of it cut off. So just put it in until you've got that very tip of it and then let's see what it looks like with that thank you kindly sentiment which we still have to put on a label because we didn't do the, all those in the beginning so let's get it on the label and let's see what we've got All right, I'm hoping I'm getting some comments on this and I'm just not seeing them. Facebook has been kind of weird with me today, but that's okay. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe there's someone commenting and it's just not showing up. I don't know. All right, let's get, thank you kindly. Let's get a block for that. We don't need a huge block, but this is kind of big, but that's all right. So thank you kindly on this one. Let's bring it toward one end and let's use, do we wanna use terracotta tile or memento? I don't know. Let's bring it toward the right end. Let's see, a little bit crooked, but not too bad, it'll be all right. So we've got our thank you kindly we have our cute little pieces there. And let's use, let's see what we've got in our fruit that we might wanna use. I don't know if I really want any of these fruits on there. Let's just hold off on the fruit. Let's find those little pieces of this here. Let's see what we've got. Of course, we could add some. That actually looks kind of cute with it added in some of that pretty peacock on the side there. That extra little piece that we had from earlier, we're just going to throw that in there. So let's put our background down first. Get that done. Let's get, let's do this layer flat as well. And then once we have that flat, then we can dimension all our sentiment and our piece of pretty peacock lattice there that we have. Let's put some dimensionals on the back of this. And now for that lattice piece, all we're gonna wanna do is after we get this sentiment down, we're gonna need just a little bit of the Tombow Multipurpose Glue. And I think we'll just put a little bit on the back of this because we want this on here kind of raised up a little bit. We could even glue it down on the ends just so it's sticking down a little bit. I think that's kind of cute. So let's just go right here on each end, just a little bit, and then maybe just on that little center strip right there. And then let's kind of center that center strip on here, and then hold these ends down, just so it gets, so it's stuck in the center and stuck on the end, so it's kind of like 
a little wave piece. You can hard, I don't know if you can really see that on camera because it's not super high. But once we have that on there, these little squares, I think if we take a piece of this, none of these are actually full squares. So maybe we might have to find another piece. So let me grab another piece. And I would kind of like maybe a little full square because that might be a cute little accent. Let's just see what it looks like once we cut one out. We'll just fussy cut one out, it's easiest to do. Go right along that. Same with this, just go right along this little edge. Maybe we could add that on there, I don't know. I'm not sure if I like that. But I also like these little bees. And these little bees are adorable. And we haven't used the little bees yet for anything. So maybe we need a little bee on this card. I think the bee is perfect. The bee looks great. I love that copper with this. All right, let's use um, glue dot for the back of the bee. I think the glue dot will hold best. Now these little bees are actually pretty heavy. So if you have these and you haven't opened them up, open them up and just feel how heavy they are. We kind of want him flying off to the left there. So that is our second card. And of course we didn't use any of the backgrounds we made with our techniques, but we had a lot of fun making that card though. So that's all right. All right, now we have these backgrounds, which you could use with any of these other colors. Let's see what we can get out of these. I kind of like, I don't know if I would want it going over top of something or as an accent to something. Let's see what it looks like over top of. Mm, I say we use it just as an accent with this paper maybe. All right, let's get a piece of pretty peacock paper. Let's go with pretty peacock for our backdrop on this one. I think I have some of those already pre-cut. Let me check. There we go, we got a pretty peacock. Piece of cardstock, fold it in half. Give it a good crease. And then we wanna add our background on first. So I am just going to take that glue again and just do some little tiny dots in some different places because once we stick our other, that's an air bubble, once we stick our other um, things on top of this, that will help hold it down. So just some little dots, if you can get it to come out right. Like mine is now not wanting to come out after the air bubble came out. Just a couple little dots in some different places. We'll keep it facing this way. And then we can cut a piece of this, which I kind of like. I don't know, which way do you like better? With the yellow, the crushed curry showing, or the terracotta tile? You let me know what you think. I'm gonna cut just a piece of this, and I'm just gonna make it three and three quarters. Let's go four and three quarters to start and see what it looks like. And then if we need to trim it down more, we can. Yeah, I think we need to trim it down just a little bit, maybe four and a half. Actually, let's go four and a quarter. go three and a quarter. Here I said I was doing three and three quarters and I had three and a half on there. I didn't even have it. Yeah, that looks cute with that background coming around from the edge of it. We can do some dimensionals on the back of this. Maybe give it a little bit of height. Get 
those backings off, stick it on there, and then we'll go from there. We can use the next sentiment that we haven't used yet, which is, let me pull it out here, and just friend. So we can do thanks friend, or thank you kindly friend, or just friend. We'll just use this sentiment. Might as well use the third sentiment for the third card, right? Get that third sentiment on there. Now that we've done some of those fun techniques, We'll just make some making cards with some of these. And if you have any suggestions, something that you want to see, let me know and I will try to do that. Now we have this little piece that we can use, which I think would be cute. So let's go ahead and I'm actually gonna stamp friend on it and then cut it out. I think kind of just fussy cut it out. We'll use some memento. And now this paper is what we sprayed at the beginning of the video. And then we're just, I'm just gonna cut this out. Just fussy cut it, get around it. Perfect. All right, we can use maybe a piece of this on here, maybe not. Maybe we could use some vellum leaves. Those would be pretty, I think. Some vellum leaves maybe coming out from behind our friend. And maybe, I don't know if we wanna throw old olive in there or maybe those pretty peacock leaves that where you punched. Those would be cute. So let's add some of those. Let's add um, a thing of pretty peacock leaves onto the back of this. We can just take a dimensional. I think a Stampin' Dimensional would be perfect to hold these down with. We'll just use a regular size dimensional because a lot of it's gonna be covered with these leaves anyway. We've got our leaves on there. We have our little piece that says friend. We could cut, maybe let's just say three of these little guys out of here. Full squares, just so we have the full border around it and not just little edges. Perfect, let me just put a couple of small dots of glue on the back of these. They'll probably stick to um, that dimensional anyway, but we'll just put a couple of dots just to make sure, just in case it doesn't stick. Then we've got those extra dots on there holding it down. And then we can take, yeah, because they're not being held down by that dimensional because it's lost all of its stick from the, I'm gonna put that block on there to hold it. From where we stuck the um, other little piece on there. Let's take friend, let's add some mini dimensionals to the back of that because we want that raised up a little bit too. And I think we're gonna have to cut these mini dimensionals in half. I think that'll work perfect. <laughs> They're falling all over. I can't even keep a hold of them. That's how my day is going, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day too. Just like me, perfect. Take the backings off. see what it's gonna look like when we stick that on there. I'm just gonna hold on to it with, and get that, thought I had the backing off and it wasn't quite off. If we need something else on there, underneath friend maybe. Hmm. I feel like we do. What do y'all think? Something else underneath there? Maybe a little bit of black and white. Too much, not enough. Let's see what we've got on the other with the black and white. We have more white, we have stripes, we have more fruit. What do y'all think? 
Any suggestions? Maybe the stripes would be cute. I've got a piece here that's a smaller piece. Mm, I don't really like that. Maybe this piece. Let's cut this little piece here as I'm knocking everything on the floor. Well, actually onto my lap, not really onto the floor. Let's go across there, that's perfect. Just put a little bit of glue across this. Now, I do like making lots of layers like this and adding different things. And it is a process of just, hey, just picking something and doing it and going with it and seeing if it works. And if it's not working, then you just don't do it. You just move on to something else. See, I still don't like the way friend looks. Anyone have any suggestions for friend? For it to be something different? Maybe if I get a little punch, maybe a small circle punch. Let me see what I have over here. I have my half inch circle punch. Let's see what we can do with that. I don't know. I'm at a loss right now. It's gonna take me a minute to figure this out. Let's grab a piece of, maybe just do a little circle of, <laughs> it's static, won't even come off my finger. Nope, not sure I like how this one's turning out so far. Mm, sad, but that's all right. All right, let's stick friend on there and then see what we've got. Definitely not my favorite of what we've done today, but it's not horrible, it's just not my favorite. Let's see if adding a little um, copper B to it would be. Mm, not quite what this one needs. It needs something floofy. Something floofy, right? Makes sense, right? Something floofy. Let me get a piece of this paper over here. And where are the pieces that we just used? There they are. Or do we wanna go with a different color background? Maybe if we did a piece of this, but kind of with that yellow background, like right here in this center. Let's get this center one. So even after we fussy cut it out, it's gonna have some of that crushed curry behind it. And maybe that will work to add something to this card that it needs. Let's see what we've got. Just do some fussy cutting. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if there's a little bit of crushed curry at the edges, you don't have to get every little edge. Remember, move your paper, not your scissors. That's like seriously key to fussy cutting. All right, almost to the end here, we're halfway through. This will take just another second and then we can add this on and it'll give it a little bit of crushed curry in that, literally a very tiny amount of crushed curry, but something to the card. Let's see if we can jazz it up a little bit and add to it, because it definitely needs something. Let's pull a friend off there and see what we get. Well, we just ripped part of our paper off. <laughs> Perfect. If we add that on there. Let's do friend on another piece of paper. Or maybe we don't even need friend on there. Maybe we're just gonna do thank you kindly again because we can. And then we'll have two thank you cards, but that's all right. But we've got thank you kindly. Let's trim it off. 
and I feel like I only want like some of it poking out like maybe it needs to go under our little banner just a little bit our little piece here so it's kind of sticking out Maybe this whole piece just needs to go. This is maybe what's throwing me off. Peel that entire thing off, get our thank you kindly on there, put some dimensionals on the back of it. It's a process, I'm telling you. Sometimes you start with one idea, you go on to something else. Um, is there anything anyone else wants to see on this or should I add to this? We're just gonna put our thank you kindly right in the center. I kind of like that we cut this out over here with the um, crushed curry. And I do wanna add that because I like that it's from that crushed curry paper and you got just a little bit of that crushed curry peeking through. Put it off to the side there so it's kind of framing our thank you. We don't need these. We can move those off to the side. Anything else we should add to this, do you think, or just leave it as is? I say maybe we just leave it as is. We get some of these supplies out of the way so I can show you all the cards that we've done today. And then maybe I'll pop on again later today and do some more techniques. Um, we'll see. I don't even know what time it is right now. So <laughs> we'll see. So we've got two thank you kindlies. We've got I'm always here for you and these are all part of the fantastic botanical prints. I'm just going to show you that again one more time. The botanical prints product medley and you get all of these fantastic pieces with it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had fun learning a couple of different techniques in the beginning and then we put together some cards so everyone could um see some of these put together. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.